Hey, all you cool cats and kittens. Mr. Main reporting for week 13 of our remote learning process. Um, thank you for joining in. Thank you for viewing this video. Um, this video should be pretty short this week. The stuff is pretty self-explanatory and I'll run through it. And if you guys have any questions, just please shoot me an email. My email is right there. You guys know this already. Um, my office hours are Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., though you can reach out at any point, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Um, you guys have continued to do a great job with communicating with me, so I appreciate that. Um, we are in our third week of remote learning, week 13 total of the semester. Um, celebration. For me, I'm just enjoying the nice weather that's coming out. I think we're getting some consistent sunny days, so that is always a positive. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying the weather. I hope you're getting out, exercising, doing whatever you need to do to stay sane during this time. Um, breakdown, we know what the breakdown is at this point. We operate on a weekly basis with this class. I'll have all of the slides uploaded with all the lessons learning targets, assignments, and instructions for the week. I'll then obviously upload this video, that is what you're watching right now, where I break down all the slides and the instructions and whatnot. Um, so it is in your best interest to watch the video as you navigate through the week. Um, if it's any sort of confusion that comes about when you're watching the video or going through the slides, obviously you can email me. Um, for assistance or extensions on things. Um, obviously, we're gonna have two to three assignments due per week. Um, you guys have been doing a good job with the quality of those and getting those turned in. So I do appreciate you guys very much. Um, the agenda for this week is as followed. We are going to talk about the hero's journey for a little bit. We're switching into our hero unit we ended our hubris unit we looked at daedalus and icarus last week and we created those illusion stories and we analyzed the myth via those questions um we're switching out of the hubris unit and we're shifting into the hero unit and i think this unit is going to be what takes us to the end of our time together um, I do save the best for last, in my opinion. I love this unit. Um, super interesting. And we're going to start by introducing this concept of the hero's journey and kind of show how it's applied in films, any film, really. Um, I know we've talked about the hero's journey real vaguely in class, um, but now we're going to really dive into it to try to identify heroes in Greek mythology and how they parallel to this idea of the hero's journey. Um, the first hero we're going to look at is the most popular hero in Greek mythology for obvious reasons. Um, it is Hercules. And we're going to do this part one and two hero, Hercules exploration activity. Part one is a clash of the gods analysis. I found a video for the Clash of the Gods for Hercules. It's about 44 minutes. Um, as you guys know, I love these videos. They are super cheesy, but super informative and entertaining. Um, after that, I found a pretty nifty article where it talks about the comparison between Hercules, the myth, to Hercules, the Disney film. And it kind of compares the two portraying how some elements are depicted in the film and then how they differ from the actual myth. Um, so there's a really nice article that illuminates those ideas and that will be the part two of the Hercules exploration. And then obviously towards the end of the week we have our reading time. Um, so the assignments that will be due this Friday at midnight the 17th um, will be the 12 stages of the hero's journey film investigation, which I'm going to introduce here in just a moment. Both parts one and two of the Hercules exploration, and again, your brief independent reading summary 
make sure you guys are reading in those novels or in one of the articles that I have provided for you on the slides. And then we will move on through our third week of remote learning and transition into the next. Um, learning targets for this week. I'm hoping by the end of this week, you can analyze the steps of the mono myth. Mono myth essentially is a fancy word for the hero's journey. There is this argument that this guy has found the algorithm, I guess you could say, of all stories, meaning that they all follow this hero's journey. Um, and hopefully by the end of this week, you can analyze the specific steps with that. Um, also identify the steps of the hero's journey in a popular film. Analyzing the Greek hero, Hercules. Analyze how his myth fits the concept of the hero's journey or kind of how it points out or how we can outline his myth to the journey of the hero. Compare then the myth of Hercules to the Disney film Hercules. And then obviously for reading in the novel, I'm hoping that you can read a novel or a text suitable for your reading level. If you are with me, give me a big old smile. All righty, uh, moving forward. There was this guy once upon a time and his name was Joseph Campbell and he was an American professor. And he came up with this argument that each and every story follows the same plot line. Now, these stories are different, obviously, in terms of, like, aesthetics and, like, settings and um, character motivations and things like that. But the plot line is similar, according to Joseph Campbell. And this plot line is referred to as the hero's journey, um, ranging from the Star Wars franchise to Lord of the Rings, the Hunger Games etc. Campbell believes that these tales are quite similar with only a few distinctions to separate them. Like I said, um, it could be character motivations, costume design, setting, things like that. Um, however, this isn't just an idea that has ran its course and now we don't talk about it. It's the exact opposite, actually. We continue to study this concept of the hero's journey because a lot of people do find validity in his claim that all stories are very similar in terms of following this journey of the hero. Um, I explained it really briefly, but I do like this TED Talk video that I'm going to pull up here in a second. It's very short and it identifies the 12 steps really of each journey of each story for a hero um, in any book, film, TV show, whatever you want to call it, there is this hero's journey that is applied in all of these stories. Um, and this TED Talk goes over it really quickly. So I'm going to play it on this video. It's only a few minutes long. And then when it's over, I'll come back and I'll explain what to do from there. So I'll click the link. Momentary pause as it loads. And here we go. You gotta lose this guy. Who is it? Doesn't matter, he'll kill both of us. Promise me something. Yeah, don't follow me. What do Harry Potter, Katniss Everdeen, and Frodo all have in common with the heroes of ancient myths? What if I told you they are all variants of the same hero? Do you believe that? Joseph Campbell did. He studied myths from all over the world and published a book called The Hero with a Thousand Faces, retelling dozens of stories and explaining how each represents the mono-myth or hero's journey. So what is the hero's journey? Think of it as a cycle. The journey begins and ends in the hero's ordinary world, but the quest passes through an unfamiliar, special world. Along the way, there are some key events. Think about your favorite book or movie. Does it follow this pattern? Status quo, 
that's where we start. One o'clock. Call to adventure. The hero receives a mysterious message. An invitation? A challenge? Two o'clock. Assistance. The hero needs some help. Probably from someone older, wiser. Three o'clock. Departure. The hero crosses the threshold from his normal, safe home and enters the special world and adventure. We're not in Kansas anymore. Four o'clock. Trials. Being a hero is hard work. Our hero solves a riddle, slays a monster, escapes from a trap. Five o'clock. Approach. It's time to face the biggest ordeal, the hero's worst fear. Six o'clock. Crisis. This is the hero's darkest hour. He faces death and possibly even dies, only to be reborn. Seven o'clock, treasure. As a result, the hero claims some treasure, special recognition or power. Eight o'clock, result. This can vary between stories. Do the monsters bow down before the hero or do they chase him as he flees from the special world? Nine o'clock, return. After all that adventure, the hero returns to his ordinary world. 10 o'clock, new life. This quest has changed the hero. He has outgrown his old life. 11 o'clock, resolution. All the tangled plot lines get straightened out. 12 o'clock, status quo, but upgraded to a new level. Nothing is quite the same once you're a hero. Many popular books and movies follow this ancient formula pretty closely. But let's see how well The Hunger Games fits the hero's journey template. When does Katniss Everdeen hear a call to adventure that gets the story moving? When her sister's name is called from the lottery? How about assistance? Is anyone going to help her on her adventure? Hey Mitch. What about departure? Does she leave her ordinary world? She gets on a train to the capital. Okay, so you get the idea. What do you have in common with Harry Potter, Katniss Everdeen, and Frodo? Well. You're human, just like them. The hero's journey myth exists in all human cultures and keeps getting updated because we humans reflect on our world through symbolic stories of our own lives. You leave your comfort zone, have an experience that transforms you, and then you recover and do it again. You don't literally slay dragons or fight Voldemort, but you face problems just as scary. Joseph Campbell said, in the cave you fear to enter lies the treasure you seek. What is the symbolic cave you fear to enter? Auditions for the school play? Baseball tryouts? Love? Watch for this formula in books, movies, and TV shows you come across. You will certainly see it again, but also be sensitive to it in your own life. Listen for your call to adventure. Accept the challenge. Conquer your fear and claim the treasure you seek. And then, do it all over again. Alrighty, I do like that video quite a bit because it applies this concept directly to the Hunger Games. Um, and then it even takes a step further and argues that we humans live our own hero's journey. You can think of high school, your whole high school journey as a hero's journey where you kind of first step into the unknown freshman sophomore year maybe not really knowing where to go yet but then ultimately you find your way um you have some trials and tribulations but at the end of the road you graduate and you are a wiser stronger individual um, because you have persevered through these challenges you have gained that sort of treasure um, of the experience and obviously the graduation diploma and whatnot. Um, but I really like that idea. And I think that video does a good job of illuminating that whole concept. Um, another brief little piece of material for you is this link here. It's just a really easily worded article about the hero's journey. I wouldn't even call it an article. It's just, really the video but in word format so it has the 12 different steps of the hero's journey starting with the ordinary world the call to adventure the refusal of the call meeting with the mentor crossing the first threshold 
encountering tests, allies, enemies, your approach, your ordeal, the reward, the road back, your sort of atonement, and then your return with the elixir. Um, these 12 steps are identified here and it has the definitions for each. I'm not gonna read them in this video. Um, but then on the next page, it sort of has this visual for you, identifying the 12 steps, but also then separating the steps into different parts. So we have part one, which is the call to adventure. Part two, the supreme ordeal. This is where the hero is tested or the hero encounters some sort of difficulty. This is where then the hero has to maybe take a new approach that they have never had to do before in order to surpass their test or their enemy. And then from that, they are hopefully successful and they come back to where they started. They return to the very beginning, their ordinary world, but they have experienced new things, um, new challenges, but these challenges in turn have made the hero stronger, wiser, um, more worldly potentially, um, and just overall a more supreme person. They are of an elevated status now because they went through this 12 steps, 12 step cycle known as the hero's journey. Um, so if you're thinking about it, you might be saying, I do believe that a lot of movies follow this sort of trajectory. And I would agree. I think a lot of movies do follow this sort of pattern. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to have you guys do as far as like a tangible piece of work for this week is this 12 steps of the hero's journey film investigation. So after you watch the video of the hero's journey, as well as the reading of that short article that I just showed you, please complete the following. On our classroom page, there is an assignment labeled 12 stages of hero's journey film investigation. This is found in the hero unit underneath the classwork tab. Um, using the Google Doc for this assignment, demonstrate your understanding of the hero's journey by tracking the hero's journey in any film of your choosing. Um, there are tips on the Google Doc as far as like definitions for each of the 12 steps and kind of what they look like. Um, you can choose any movie of your choice. I have some suggestions. You are not limited to these, however. Um, I've seen a lot of good work a lot of good pieces of work with the movie shrek star wars the hunger games i discourage you from using the hunger games because the video used that one um the lord of the rings is another great one spider-man and the water boy i think that one's funny i've seen a lot of good ones with the water boy actually um so you'll find the document and it looks like this you would just type your name right here the name of the film you are using, so I can kind of track it with you. And then it says, in the blank line under each stage, please write in the appropriate plot point for your piece of media. That is your film. Um, so step one, the ordinary world, you just type what the ordinary world looks like for your hero in your film and then you just kind of complete the process for all of the 12 steps and that is it for that assignment um, if you have any questions with that please let me know um, as always you guys know what my email is mmain at d51schools.org just shoot me an email if you have any questions on it um, here are some other movies you can maybe potentially use. Um, but be creative and just show me your understanding of the hero's journey. I'm gonna take a momentary pause and then I will continue on with the video. Alrighty, so now that we have identified the hero's journey elements and we have 
identified those elements in a film of our choosing, we are going to now shift gears and focus more specifically on the hero according to Greek myth. And our first hero that we're going to look at is this dude right here, Hercules. Um, if you go on the hero unit section of our classwork tab in Google Classroom, you will find the Hercules exploration assignment. It looks like this one right here. Um, it is two parts. Part one is the Clash of the Gods analysis. And part two is basically analyzing how three or four, sorry, four different topics or subjects are portrayed in the myth of Hercules and then how it is portrayed in the Disney film. This will make more sense after you watch the Clash of the Gods video because if you've seen Hercules, you kind of have a preconceived notion of the myth, but you'll see a lot, a lot of differences from the actual myth presented in this Clash of the Gods video and then in the movie Hercules um, produced by Disney. So the directions just say complete the exploration of the Greek hero Hercules by viewing the Clash of the Gods video linked here for part one. For part two, use the article linked here to help explain the differences of the Hercules myth to the well-known classic Disney film, Hercules. So I've linked both um, pieces of material that you'll need on this document. They are also on the Google slide. So if you go back, the video link is here. You'll click it and it will take you to this right here. I'm not gonna play it in this video because that would be extensive for this instructional video. Um, it is here for you. It's only 44 minutes. It's not that bad. If you wanna chunk it up into two days, you can, um, but you play it. He is the greatest. And it's stuff that we have seen before, similar to the Clash of the Gods with um, Hades and Zeus. Um, so there are some questions specifically for the Clash of the Gods video. There's eight questions and then just taking notes on three new things you learned about Hercules. And then briefly explain how the myth of Hercules fits the concept of the hero's journey. Thinking back to those 12 steps, how does his myth kind of reflect these 12 steps? You don't have to state every single step, but just give me a brief, in your own words, style explaining, explanation as to how this myth fits the hero's journey. From there, then, there is this article. And it says, using the article, Disneyfied or Disney tried, Hercules versus Heracles. Heracles is the Greek spelling and pronunciation of Hercules. Um, this Hercules right here is referring to the Disney film. So using this article, select four topics or subjects that are addressed in the article and explain how that subject is depicted in both the myth of Hercules or Heracles and in the Disney film Hercules. Complete the chart below. For extra credit, if you so desire, you can watch the Disney film Hercules if it is accessible to you. Um, it's on Disney Plus, but if you have a DVD copy of it, if you have a Blu-ray copy of it, go for it. Um, you can watch that. And then in the extra space provided, analyze any other details that the movie depicted differently from the information about the myth found in the Clash of the Gods video. So. There's this chart here that says the topic or subject, and then how is it depicted in the myth? And then how is that subject depicted in the Disney film? Everything you'll need to fill out this chart is found in this article right here. So let's just look. We have this topic right here, Hercules the Demigod. It talks about how it's depicted in the Disney version, and then also how it's depicted in 
the mythology version. Um, so I think there's like six or seven of these different topics. I'm asking you to analyze four. Doesn't need to be too extensive, but just show me understanding of the article in your own words. And then in this extra space provided, this is a, an extension of part two where you watch the Disney film and in the extra space provided, analyze any other details that the movie depicted differently from the info about the myth found in the Clash of the Gods video. As always, if you have any questions, email me. Um, it's mmain at d51schools.org in case you forgot. Um, and then that's just the, this slide is the second part, the part that I just went over with the Disney article. And then lastly, for this week, we have our independent reading time. So similar to last week, just take some time to read in your independent novel and give me a three to four sentence summary of what you read for this week um, on the assignment labeled Remote Learning Week 3 Independent Reading Summary. If you are not currently reading a novel, um, I have linked a very um, credible website about articles related to COVID-19. Um, they're more of the scientific approach with kind of identifying what it is and everything. But like I said last week in the video, it is important to kind of make yourself aware of the situation because this is an unprecedented time we are living in. And to make ourselves aware of the situation is to educate ourselves and truly understand what we are living through right now. Um, so you have that option if you don't have a book readily available at, uh, at this time. Um, and that is it, you guys. If you have any questions about anything for this week, please let me know. Um, the reason we're not reading The Myth of Hercules is because the copy I have is like 20 pages. And it's like, do we want to read 20 pages of Hercules or do we want to watch a 44 minute Clash of the Gods? Um, so we're going to go with the video this week. I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope you find some interesting things from the Disney movie to the myth version of Hercules or Heracles. Um, I miss you guys a whole bunch. That has not changed and it only grows each and every week. Um, so take care of yourselves. Take care of your families. Do those things that you enjoy to do. Be the best you you can be, and as always, go forth and conquer.